Nuclei are stable or unstable. There's a whole scale of stability, basically. Some are more stable, some are less stable. And that's due to the composition of the nucleus. Now, nuclei decay to become more stable. That decay is completely random. There's no way to predict it and there's no way to influence it. Some definitions that you need to know are activity is that's the rate at which a source of radiation decays. And that's measured in Becquerel, which just means per second, how many decays there are per second. And count rate is the number of decays actually picked up by a, a detector. So that can be slightly different from the actual activity. The number we measure might not be the same as the actual decay rate, the actual activity. And that's because those radiations can go in all directions and we using a specific piece of apparatus to measure at a specific point in space. So not all of the radioactive particles given out by an actual radioactive substance would be recorded by a Geiger-Muller tube. So nuclear decay being random means you can't predict when an individual nucleus will decay. And remember that one Becquerel is equal to one decay per second. There are other units that we could use, for example counts per minute for measuring a count rate. Radioactive decay comes into three and then one bonus category, if you like, alpha, beta, and gamma. But you do also need to know what a neutron emission is. Alpha is a helium nucleus. That's two protons and two neutrons, and it's ejected from the nucleus. All of these things come from the nucleus of atoms, and that's what makes them nuclear radiation. A beta is a high-speed electron. It's ejected from the nucleus when actually a neutron turns into a proton. A gamma ray is a photon of very high frequency electromagnetic radiation given out by the nucleus. And neutron emission is another way that an atom can decay to become more stable. It simply can give out one extra neutron. It had a few too many neutrons, let's say, and it just gives one out and that leaves it more stable. You need to be able to describe what these radiations are and you need to be able to say what their penetration power is and what their ability to ionize is like, their ionizing power if you like. You don't need to know the penetration and ionizing ability of a neutron emission though. Alpha particles are really highly ionizing and that's because they have a two plus charge. They're two protons, so they have a charge of plus two. Now, because they're highly ionizing, they're also less penetrating. They're not very penetrating at all because of that ionizing ability. As they go through stuff, they ionize it all and they give away their kinetic energy so they don't get very far. We state their penetrating ability as their range in air being about two to four centimeters and that they are absorbed by thin paper. Beta has a medium ionization. It's mediumly ionizing because it has a charge of minus one. So it's half as charged as the alpha particle. It's also quite fast moving, so that makes it less ionizing as well because it doesn't spend a lot of time near atoms. It has a medium penetration as well because of that medium ionization and because of the speed that it travels. And it will go up to about two meters in air and it will be absorbed by two millimeters of aluminium. That's what we quote as its penetrating power. Gamma is not very ionizing at all because it's got zero charge. It has the lowest ionization, so that makes it the most penetrating. It's absorbed by thick lead or concrete. It's got an almost infinite range in air. Now you need to not just know this stuff, but you also need to be able to apply this knowledge to maybe evaluate which source of radiation might be best to use in this particular situation. For example, you can't use alpha or gamma to measure the thickness of paper because no alpha would penetrate any of the paper and all of the gamma would. So it would be worthless in actually measuring the thickness of paper. We use a stream of beta particles to actually measure the thickness of paper as we're manufacturing it. And that's why all the paper comes out of that perfect thickness. It's all exactly the same thickness. And that's because some of the betas will be absorbed and some of them will get through. So the amount that actually get through the paper will change depending on the thickness of the paper. That's just one example of how useful radionuclides can be to us.